I enlisted to be a veterinary uh, assistant. I was going to treat the, the general's cat, you know, and the, and the admiral's dog or whatever. That was my dream because I was going to be a veterinarian. And, you know, I thought, well, they might as well teach me something. And it was also at that time, uh, veterinary services were meat inspectors and blah, blah, blah. And that was a pretty lucrative field when you got out of the military to go do. I Well, that sounds pretty good. And so when I was in basic... Uh, the, the Green Beret guys came by and they had, you know, their jump boots and their wings and they were looking, their berets and, oh, they were looking good. I said, well, that's me. <laughs> and so I, I, uh, volunteered for that. So I volunteered for another year in the military because the, to volunteer for the draft, it's only two years. And so I, I volunteered for another year because I that was me. I was going to do that. So, um, went through all the training and, went, and so. I wanted to be a medic, and so I continued to be a medic. And so I went through uh, basic AIT, which was at Fort Sam, which was the, the medical AIT as a 91 Alpha. And then I went to um, jump school, and that was very cool. I, that's the best thing I ever did in my military. I, I do it 500 times over. It was very cool. And uh, then I went to Special Forces training, and— uh, did okay in that, but then I realized what that was really, all, what Special Forces was really all about, and that wasn't me. So I got through all of the basic part of Special Forces and went, no, I don't think I want to do this. And they said, oh, we have a place for you to go, Phil. <laughs> and so I got to go to the land of green, Vietnam, as a combat medic. Okay, I w we touched down in Cameron Bay, and one of my first experiences is that Vietnam hit me in the face. It was just the the smells. I, you know, I had never smelled any rotting jungle type smells before. And we landed in uh, Cameron Bay, and that's a pretty big city, pretty industrialized. And so it had all the, the sense of that. But it was like, you know, we we got there probably at four in the morning, just as four or five in the morning. And so the lights were on and I'm going, well, shit, you know, I'm in a war zone. I got all these lights on us and, and I'm going, whoa, this is, this is not what I signed up for. And then they, they took us off to where, uh, where we were going to spend the night. And that was kind of rude because they were just cots and there were no sheets. There were no pillows. There was cots and that's all there was. <laughs> and that's not quite what I had expected, but, um. Uh, then we, from there, we went to, um, oh, they do all the rudimentary stuff. They do the dental, dental checks so you don't have any rotten teeth that they have to take care of in the, when you're in the field. And then they assigned you to your unit. And the Americal, was, that was right after TETA-68. I mean, they were still recovering from TETA-68, and all the combat medics were pretty, pretty thin. And so I was a, a, assigned to a, a combat unit. And what a combat medic is, it's just a grunt with a Band-Aid, in essence. It's, uh, you know, all the guys are carrying rifles, and I'm carrying an aid bag, but I'm doing everything that a, a 91 Bravo does. I mean, go the same places, do this, eat the same chow, stay in the same mud, you know, all that, all the good stuff, getting bit by the same mosquitoes and munched on by the same leeches. <laughs> I was issued my, uh, all my, my medic stuff, my medic aid bag, my, uh, medications, you know, bandages, blah, blah, blah. And what was really interesting, what I needed the most out in the field were regular Band-Aids. And do you think we ever got one? I never got a Band-Aid. I asked for them over and over, but we just, because, you know, you get scratches, you get cuts, you can't put a field dressing on a, you know, a cut finger. You put a Band-Aid on it. But otherwise, you know, they have a... <laughs> So we had to put these huge bandages on on the little bitty cuts and stuff. So that that was pretty interesting to me. So I'd been in country probably ten days total, and I was in combat in ten days. Our initial firefight is because I was going to be a purist medic. I wasn't going to carry a weapon or a rifle or anything like that. Extra extra weight, you know, extra cleaning, extra doing all that other kind of stuff. First firefight I was in, the guy next to me, he bought it. And so I picked up his rifle, and that was my friend for the rest of the time I was in country. Because I went, no, that's bullshit. <laughs> They're shooting at me. <laughs> yeah. It's not romantic. It's not John Wayne. <laughs> and it's um, it's terrifying. I mean, it's just, it's really, uh, 
it's probably one of the scariest experiences I ever had was that first firefight. It was just petrifying. I mean, it was, it was almost bowel liquefying. You were that, that scared. I was anyway. Because no matter how much training you have, you'd never get that, that there's bullets coming by it. And the Viet Cong or the North Vietnamese had blue tracers. We had red tracers. And so all this, this greenish blue shit coming by you, because every fifth, tenth round is a tracer, so they can see where they're firing. And so you have all these blue fireflies coming at you. You go, oh, shit. <laughs> well, we had one. We were, we were breaking for a noonday meal. And there was a, a, a person coming over the ridge, and it was a, it was a girl, and it was a, a NVA spy that was coming across. We found that out later. And so she, um, we started making noise. You know, everybody got their weapons out, blah, 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 because we didn't know what was coming over. It was just this one person. And she uh, dumped her backpack. She was carrying a backpack and just ran. And so we went and picked up the backpack, and it had uh, maps and papers and other sort of things. So that was pretty, and that was probably oh, a month into my, into my tour. Cause I only made it five months in Vietnam. So it was, and normally it's a year long tour, but I got hit. And so that was, uh, that was it for me. Well, we'd been on a, uh, a patrol through the Ho Chi Minh Trail and we came into, a, the villages were of course stationary. They were always there. And so we would go in and we would clear out the Vietnamese because we were in a free fire zone. We'd clean out that, we would clear out the Vietnamese civilians and evacuate them. And then we'd leave and come back the next day or the next day. And whoever was back in the village were either VC or NBA. And so it was free fire. We had captured the village. We, we had corralled all of the civilians and we were going to evacuate them the next morning because it was 10, uh, it was, it was just dusk. It was maybe eight, nine, or so, and well, it was, wasn't that late because it was November, so maybe it was five, six. And uh, so we, and so my job was to, because I was a medic, was to watch the, the women and children in, in the corral. And that really pissed off the, the guys that, because there wasn't very many guys in the, in the village at that time. And so it really pissed them off. So they came in and, and did a, um, an attack onto the village to, to, uh, recapture their women and kids, blah, blah, which would have pissed me off too, but you know, and so I, um, we got, got hit. It was, it was dark. And, uh, the first thing I knew the, the flares, the, the tripwire flares were going off and it was just bright light, just bright white with the flares. And a guy got hit, oh, probably, you know, two or three feet ahead of me. And he got a, a mortar in the solar plexus. It didn't blow up because it, they have to have so many um, rotations. So it just passed through him. And he was dead. He just didn't know it. He was still talking. So he was still talking and I was talking to him and a, a grenade came over a chi grenade, um, and because it was the middle of the night, I didn't have my helmet on. I was using it for a pillow because it was muddy. <laughs> and so you just, I just grabbed my head bag and was working on this guy. And so the grenade uh, flew through the air, hit my head, bounced off, blew up. And grenades explode in, in kind of a V where this is the least amount and this is the most amount. And I was down because I was laying over this guy because he saved my life working on him because if I would have been kneeling, I would have been, it would have taken my head off. So anyway, I got, I got a, the grenade in the back of the head. I have a plate that's about the size if you cut a softball in half in the back of my skull. And I was one of the first fiberglass plates that they put in. It's actually a dental material. They took me to the dentist when I was in, uh, I was in at uh, Balboa Naval Hospital, even though I was in the Army. Because they had the best neurosurgeon uh, that was that was in the area, and I grew up in San Diego, and I was I was pretty messed up, and so they wanted to get me back to familiar um, certain surroundings and stuff, so I would come out of where I was at. Because I was in a coma about three and a half weeks, I I was deaf, I was blind, I uh, was paralyzed on the right side, so I was pretty messed up. It was I was in the hospital about seventeen months. I was at Baboa Naval, and then I did some, um, um, I was at Baboa 
17 months, and I, I got convalescent leave and stuff like that, of course. That was part of that 17 months. And it was, they just did physical therapy with me. Um, like I said, I, I couldn't, I had a aphasia, which means you can't talk. I couldn't talk. I was blind. I'm blind on the right side of each eye. I have paralysis on the right side um, from the, the brain injury. And so they worked with, you know, PT and, and physical therapy, uh, occupational therapy, blah, blah, blah. And finally, uh, I had a, a speech therapist who told me that, you know, if I was ever going to do anything, I had to do vocabulary. I had to learn. And so we did that for weeks and weeks and weeks that we did uh, vocabulary words that instead of saying um, use, you say utilize, makes you sound smarter. But you know. <laughs> And um, and so did that. And like I said, uh, PT, which was horrendous. It hurt. It was hard to do. Um, but, you know, came through it and it was all okay. Uh, it probably took me at least 10 years to become a normal human being again. Just to be able to to communicate well, to, you know, walk and talk and not look like an idiot. <laughs> like I said earlier, you know, war is it's not for sissies for sure. And it, war should never be. I understand why it's, you know economically and politically necessary sometimes, but it's bullshit. I mean, because the politicians don't fight the wars. The 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 guys, you know, the the young men fight the wars. The young men and women fight the wars, not the not the old like my wife likes to call them white old men because they make all the policies, they do all of the that, that kind of decisions. And uh, the the young white men <laughs> or the young men um are um just have to follow what they say. And if it's popular, it's, you know, like the Gulf War, even though it was a more popular war, uh, much more popular than, than Vietnam. I can remember coming home and being spit on. So I never told anybody I was a Vietnam vet, but I had to explain my injuries and, you know, it's, well, I got hit by a truck or whatever, <laughs> but, uh, but I always, you know, I told them I was, you know, a Vietnam vet and all of that, but, uh, it was difficult. Because we were lower than whale poop at, when we got home in the in the seventies, and because I I retired from the military December no September the second nineteen seventy. So my extensive military career was a year and ten months from the time I went into basic until I was retired out of the army. Long time, huh? <laughs> Certainly life changing. You don't ever get rid of it. You just learn how to handle it. It's like any other kind of trauma that one deals with in life is that you, you just deal with what you're dealt. You either do that or die. And that's not an option. <laughs> it's, the nightmares are not as much anymore. What my wife did when we got together, she and I have been married for uh, 36 years now, together 37 years. And uh, when I was having nightmares, she because the, the guy that died was Bones. That was his. And, and, and in Vietnam, because I was such a newbie in country when I got hit because I was only there five months. And you don't make really lasting uh, relationships because you know the guy's going to ship out tomorrow or it's going to be a brand. The FNG, I'm sure you know what FNG is, uh, would would come through. And so and you just don't, don't – you try not to get to know those folks because they're either going to be dead or gone. And um, – I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, you're talking about Bones, the guy that— Oh, yeah, Bones. Uh, he was the guy that died in my arms. And— <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, after I had a bad nightmare, um, my wife said, well— Next time you dream about him, just tell him you're okay. <laughs> And, uh, sorry. Yeah. Take your time. You're fine. Tell him that you're okay and life is good. And, and, and so I did that. I had a conversation in my head with him and I've not had a, a nightmare since about that, about him dying. So it worked. <laughs> Even though if a war is unpopular, 
is it's not the individual's fault that goes to war. It's the government's fault that sends them to war. And they need to support the individuals coming home. Because that was, that was very, very hard of, of being lower than whale shit. I mean, it was so many people, if my recollection, uh, is that, well, you, you could have not gone. Well, you know, you could have, you could have, you know, gone to jail or you could have gone to Canada or you could have blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. But no, you can't. I mean, if you, you know, you take that oath and that oath is that oath <laughs> to me anyway. And, um, and it still is. There's no expiration date on that. 